this presentation will discuss the function and components of a timer relay, the function and components of a counter relay, and the design for sequential operation of pneumatic cylinders. So timer relays are basically relays. So the components of uh, a timer relay are the same as with the ordinary relay. However, the main difference between a timer and an ordinary relay is that the timer provides time delay before switching contacts. Just like with a relay, the timer needs its coil to be energized before it can function. So in a relay, if you remember, when the coil of a given relay is injected, okay, so with the rated voltage, automatically the context of a relay changes its position right away. For a timer, so the timer when uh, energized, that means the coil is being supplied with the rated voltage, the timer does not, okay, so it does not uh, switch the auxiliary contacts right away. So before it switches its auxiliary contact to uh, other position, the timer, as the name suggests, provides time delay. So depending on the type of the timer, so the delay process may vary. So there are two types of uh, timer relays available. So we have the on delay type and then we have also the off delay type timer. Okay, so for the on delay type, when the coil of the on delay type timer is energized, the timer provides time delay after it has been energized and after the preset time, the contacts or the auxiliary contacts of the timer or the on delay timer switches its position. Once the on delay timer is de-energized, that means it is or the supply is being cut off, so immediately the contact or the auxiliary contacts of the on delay timer uh, goes back to its initial position. For the off delay type timer, when the coil is being energized with the rated voltage, the contact or the auxiliary contacts of the off delay timer automatically switch or change position. So, in an on-delay timer, again, when the coil is energized, the contact does not change position right away. It will provide time delay before it switches its contact. For an off-delay timer, when the coil is energized, it changes its contact right away. However, when the off delay timer is being energized, I mean de energized, or the supply is cut off, the off delay timer will provide time delay before switching the contact to its initial position. So, as you can see, the timer or the time delay provided by the timer depends on 
the type of the timer for an on delay the delay is or the time delay is being held after the coil is being energized so hence the uh, timer or the ta or the that type of timer is termed on delay because the delay happens after the coil is being on or energized for the off delay timer the delay is held after the timer is being de-energized that means after the timer is being uh, off then the contacts does not uh, return to its initial position not until the present time of the off delay timer uh, is being uh, completed the relay counter so unlike with the uh, timer so the timer provides uh, time delay so for the relay counter the function of the relay counter is to uh, count okay so it counts the number of pulses that the uh, coil receive so the term pulses okay so the term pulses of the uh, relay counter can be uh, somehow related to turning on and off so meaning to say the uh, relay counter counts the number of times that the coil has been turned on and off so that what that's what the term pulse means in the definition so if the uh, timer or the counter is being set to five times that means the contact or the auxiliary contact of a counter will only position or will only change its position after the coil of the relay counter has been turned on and off five times so basically there are still two uh, components in a relay counter so the first one is the coil represented by uh, a1 and a2 terminals okay so and the auxiliary contacts okay so now again the function or the operation of a relay counter is that it determines okay so it determines the number of times it has been turned on and off okay so after the present number of times it has been turned on and off then that would be the time that the auxiliary contacts of a relay counter will change its uh, position okay so the terminals r1 and r2 is the reset uh, terminals of the relay counter that means after the uh, preset count so these terminals can be used to reset the count back to zero okay so in the simulation mode the counter can be set Okay, so it can be set by, by di directly clicking the relay counter element. Okay, so in the uh, physical component, so there is a reset button that can be found in the uh, relay counter module. So wherein after the preset count, so the operator can manually press the button 
or the reset button and then the count okay so will be uh, or the count will reset to the predefined count and that is usually the starting point which is zero so after it has uh, counted shall we say five times so the auxiliary contacts of the relay counter will change position then in order for the relay counter to be used again the uh, preset count must be uh, reset to the starting value okay so and that uh, starting value usually is of course zero so without resetting okay so without resetting the relay counter so the relay counter will not be uh, able to function so the next process or the next topic would be about the what we so called as sequential operation of uh, pneumatic cylinders so for the sequential operation okay, so as the name or as the topic suggests sequence that means there will be uh, predefined uh, actions of the uh, pneumatic cylinders that will be uh, followed and then this predefined actions of the uh, pneumatic cylinder is termed as the sequence of the pneumatic uh, circuit the sequential operation of a pneumatic system can be uh, shown or can be uh, visualized by means of the what we so called as displacement step diagram or sometimes called step diagram or sometimes termed only as displacement diagram okay so as you can see in this figure so we have there three uh, cylinders named uh, cylinder one cylinder two and uh, cylinder three so in the sequential operation we denote the term plus to indicate that the cylinder uh, has extended and we denote that term minus or the sign minus to indicate the retraction of the cylinder for instance in this figure so we have uh, three cylinders such that at this point in time okay so at this point in time the cylinders are all uh, in retracted mode okay so now after the circuit has been activated the cylinder one automatically extended okay so as shown so the transition between one to two indicates that only the first cylinder has attained the extended position okay so while cylinder two and cylinder three are still in retracted position now in the transition from two to three it was shown that the cylinder one remains in its extended position then cylinder two okay so cylinder two extends whereas cylinder three remain in its retracted position now for the transition between three to four as you can see the cylinder one still is at its extended position cylinder 2 retracts okay 
and then cylinder 3 is still at retracted position. Okay? So, for the transition from 4 to 5, as you can see, the cylinder 1 already retracts. Okay? So, from extended position, the cylinder 1 retracts. Okay, so where are cylinder 2? Okay, so cylinder 2 is still in its retracted position. Okay, so cylinder 3 from 4 to 5 is still in its retracted position. So as you can see, the moment that the cylinder 1 fully retracts, that is actually the hint, okay, so of the circuit that the cylinder 3 or that the cylinder 3 will start to extend. So, that happens in the transition from 5 to 6. Okay, so, uh, after cylinder 1 retract, then cylinder 3 extend after cylinder 3 is in its fully extended position okay so which is in 6 then automatically cylinder 3 retract so we may say that the sequence of this displacement step diagram is a plus Okay, so A plus, that means the first cylinder extend. B plus, so after the first cylinder has extended, the next cylinder or the second cylinder also extend. B minus, that means after the second cylinder extend, it automatically retract. Okay, so as shown, so it extend and then retract. Okay, so after the second cylinder retract, you have there A minus. Okay, so this should be the point wherein the cylinder 2 is in fully extended position, that is B plus. So then this should be the point wherein the cylinder 2 retract. And at 4, this would be the point wherein the cylinder 2 is in its fully retracted position. That would be B minus. So if you try to look at it, the displacement step, after B minus, okay, so as you can see B minus, this would be the B minus. So this commands the cylinder 1 also to retract. So that's why you have there A minus. Okay, so as you can see, A minus. So when the cylinder 1 is in its fully retracted position, that is in number 5, the next sequence would be C plus. Okay, this one, C plus, that means after cylinder A retract, the next step would be cylinder 3, 2, okay, or after cylinder 1 retracts. A, a minus the next step would be cylinder 3 to extend that would be C plus and then after cylinder 3 extend the next step would be C minus that means the cylinder will automatically retract okay so for the given displacement step diagram Okay, so the equivalent sequence of operation is A plus, B plus, B minus, A minus, C plus, and C minus. Now, for the sequential operation of pneumatic cylinders, there might be chances that the timers and uh, counters may be used for a given uh, pneumatic system operation so in this video or in this uh, lecture so we will be uh, performing 
So the following uh, activities, uh, sequential uh, activities. So the first one would be A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. That means uh, for number one, cylinder A will extend, then retract. Then cylinder B will extend, then retract. The second activity entails uh, the use of a timer. So in the second activity, we're going to perform the sequence A+, plus. that means cylinder A will extend, then B+, plus, cylinder B will extend also. After 5 seconds, cylinder B retract, and then after cylinder B retract, Cylinder A will also retract. Okay, so then the uh, last activity so will entail the use of the relay counter and the timer for the given sequence. Uh, A plus, A minus, then B plus, then uh, 5 seconds delay, then B minus. And then the cycle has to repeat uh, 5 times. So for the given activity, so we'll be using the uh, double acting cylinder for both cylinder A and B. While cylinder A uses a single solenoid, 5 to wave valve, and cylinder B uses double solenoid 5 to way valve. Now the next step would be to uh, simulate the given uh, pneumatic circuit uh, sequence. So we need to have the fluid sim in uh, simulator. Okay, so assuming that you have already the installer, so you can open the fluid sim folder. So go to bin. Okay, so and run the application and then you will be directed to this uh, window. So we need to create a new working area. So click this one or you may click the uh, control plus N. Uh, button or key in your uh, computer okay and then uh, we need to have the pneumatic circuit first okay so that is the uh, cylinder okay so the circuit comprising of the cylinders the compressor and then the solenoid valves Okay, so as instructed, we'll be using the double acting cylinders for uh, both cylinder A and B. So under the actuators tab, so drag the double acting cylinder. Okay, so you have their cylinder A and cylinder B. Okay, so now cylinder A will use the okay, cylinder A will be using the single solenoid 5 to wave valve and cylinder B will be using the double solenoid 5 to wave valve so under solenoid operated tab okay so uh, kindly okay so you may drag Okay, so the 5 to way uh, solenoid valve for cylinder A. And then uh, the 5 to way solenoid impulse valve for cylinder B. Okay, so now we can add from the shut off valve ok 
Okay, so the throttle valve, so this should be used to regulate the uh, flow of air from the compressor going to the uh, cylinder. Okay, so although it is uh, optional, but uh, we can use this one to adjust the speed of the extension and retraction of the uh, double acting cylinder. So you may click this one, okay, and then uh, rotate by 90 degrees. Okay, so we can adjust the opening of the valve to, uh, shall say, 20%. Then you may copy. Okay, so uh, you may copy using the Control C plus Control V function. Okay, so. Uh, in the keyboard of your computer and then you can connect okay so connect so the percentage opening of the shut off valves okay so the four shut off valve the opening is set to uh, 20%. Okay, so for us to uh, see later on the sequence of the uh, pneumatic system or pneumatic circuit clearly. So we can name, okay, so we can uh, name the solenoid coil of cylinder A to be Y1. And then uh, for the second cylinder, we can have Y2 and Y3. So after which we need to have the source of air. So given by the, well, of course, the compressor. Okay, so we can have one compressor for both of the uh, cylinders. So we can connect the compressor to the inlet of each solenoid valves okay just like that okay so and then the next step would be to build okay or design the uh, control circuit of the uh, pneumatic setup okay or the control circuit of the electro pneumatic setup so for this activity, so we'll be using the uh, NEMA symbols okay, to construct the ladder circuit of the uh, given pneumatic uh, circuit. So for NEMA, so that is located for all of the elements. Okay, so can be found in the ladder symbols tab. So what we need to do is to first to have the voltage, okay, so source voltage, so we can have the positive supply, okay, so you may adjust it, okay, and then, and also the negative, okay, so zero. Okay, so this one, then uh, next is to uh, have the uh, push button, so take note of the sequence, okay, so that is A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus, so A plus means uh, cylinder A will have to extend uh, first, then retract automatically. Then after the retraction of cylinder A, then the extension and retraction of cylinder B will take place. Okay, so A plus means cylinder A will extend. Okay, so... Uh, but first, we need to 
Okay, before we'll continue to the design of the control circuit, we need to have the sensor for, okay, so the proximity sensors for the two pneumatic cylinders. So we'll be using a limit switch for cylinder one, and then we'll be using read switch for cylinder two. Okay, so to add the sensor, so you may go to the actuators and use distance rule. Okay, so since this is uh, a limit switch, then the sensors are located, okay, so uh, at the shaft of the uh, pneumatic cylinders okay so for red switch the sensors are located at the body okay, so of the cylinder so we may double click this one so we can label the sensor or sensors as S1 and S2 so we're in S1 will detect the uh, retraction of cylinder A, S2 will detect the extension of cylinder A. So the sensor S1 will begin with 0 and uh, you may end it with 5. Again, the 0 to 5 uh, begin and end position indicates the width. Okay, so the width of the uh, sensor okay so for s2 so we can have from 96 to 100 okay so okay so s1 this would be 0 to 5 s2 would be from 96 to 100 okay so again though no? if you want to uh, know uh, what's the relevance of having these uh, numbers you may watch again the uh, part 2 of the recorded uh, video lecture for electron pneumatics ok so 96 to 100 and click ok and then for cylinder okay so you may double click okay so this would be s3 and it starts with 0 and with 5 uh, s4 so that starts with 96 and end with 100 okay so s1 and s2 are both uh, limit switches and s3 and s4 are both read switches so we're now ready to uh, design the control circuit for the given uh, sequence okay so we have already the positive and negative supply okay so for the first part of the sequence which is a plus so we have to okay so we have to uh, find a way for the first uh, cylinder so to extend okay so when you say extend so that means it will continue to extend uh, even if the push button is being released so just like what we have done in the previous um, example so we have the normally open push button so which is connected to the or connected in series with the uh, coil okay, of the solenoid valve 
Okay, so first we have the push button. Okay, so this one, and then we also have the solenoid valve. So take note. Okay, so please remember the uh, principle of the five two way or the principle of the single solenoid five two way valve. So for the cylinder to extend, so Y1 must be activated okay, or energized. So for the cylinder to retract, Y1 must be de-energized. Okay, so to energize means to connect the uh, coil to the supply voltage. Okay, so we may double click this one and then type start. Okay, and then this would be Y1. Okay, so we connect the two in series. Okay, so and then okay, so we can try to simulate. Okay, so when you press Y1, so cylinder one extends, that means it's uh, A plus. Okay, so but take note, okay, so if you try to observe, if we press Y1, it, so the cylinder, the double acting cylinder A cannot reach the full position after which is immediately the start Unless otherwise, we keep on holding the uh, start push button, then the cylinder A will continue to extend. Okay, so but then that would not be the case of uh, a push button. So a push button is meant to be pressed and released. Okay, so now in order to uh, facilitate the continuation of the uh, extension process of cylinder A, then we need to have the what we so called sealing contact that will uh, seal the open contact uh, created by the uh, normally open push button after it is released. But the solenoid coil okay so the solenoid coil y1 cannot have the ceiling contact okay so this is not a relay okay so this is not a relay coil it is a solenoid coil so a solenoid cannot offer an auxiliary contact so, in order for us to have the uh, auxiliary contact, we need to provide the relay. Okay. So, the relay will serve okay, so as a device that will uh, cause the auxiliary contact to seal the terminals of the start push button so we have to have the relay okay so this one and then the normally open contact okay so this make switch okay so the relay will be termed k1 okay and then this switch is also termed k1 okay so, as you notice, the symbol of the auxiliary contact changes okay, as soon as we term it as the auxiliary contact of the delay. So, if you try to recall in your electrical circuit subject, so parallel circuits will uh, simultaneously operate at a given voltage. Okay, so because they are connected in parallel so also the parallel connection uh, means that the supply voltage is kept constant 
across the parallel connected uh, circuit element. So, the Y1 or the solenoid coil has a rated voltage which is 24 volts. K1 also has a rated voltage of 24 volts. Then there is no way we can connect the two in series. So connecting the two in series will divide the voltage uh, by two. That means the voltage across Y1 would be 12 and the voltage across K1 would be 12. So that uh, means that the two coils will not operate properly. Okay, so therefore we need to connect K1 in parallel with Y1. Okay, so that means if Y1 activates, K1 also activates at the same time. So the ceiling contact will activate as soon as K1 will be energized. So if you try to look at, okay, so we'll try to simulate uh, rung per rung. Okay, so in such a way we can decide Okay, so as to what will be uh, the next uh, circuit elements, okay, so we try to uh, click the start button. If, if we release, then the cylinder continues to uh, extend. We can further, okay, so we can further uh, adjust the opening of the valve. So we can make it 15. Okay, so the purpose of making this to 15 is for the cylinder to move uh, as slow as possible. Okay, so 15%. Okay, so and then, okay. So if you try to do the simulation again, so that would be A plus. Okay, so uh, A plus means... Uh, the full extension of cylinder A. So, recall that the next uh, step okay, in the uh, sequence is A minus. That means after the uh, cylinder A extends, it must automatically retract. Okay, so that is A plus, A minus, okay? So, uh, what will happen next is that uh, after the circuit identifies that the cylinder A has attained the fully extended position, so the control circuit must be able to uh, command the next sequence which is a minus the one that will uh, detect the fully extension of or the full extension of cylinder A would be uh, S2 or sensor 2 therefore uh, sensor 2 will command okay so it will uh, command that the cylinder A must retract after it reaches the fully extended position. So, the next process would be the placement. Okay. So, how do we uh, place or how do we position the sensor 2 in such a way that it will or once it is triggered okay so by the uh, piston rod of the cylinder it will give a signal to the circuit that the cylinder a must return to the retracted position and uh, if we try to go back to the concept of a uh, 5 to a single solenoid valve, the only way that the 
uh, double acting cylinder attached or connected to the 5 to way single solenoid valve to retract is to uh, de-energize Y1. So meaning to say, uh, after the cylinder has attained the fully extended position, then the sensor 2 must be able to cut off. Okay, so it must be able to turn off Y1. In turn, the cylinder A will retract. Okay, so, but first we need to have the uh, sensor 2 first. Okay, so again, sensors are normally open switch. So we can have the make switch, drag this one, and then uh, double click. Okay, so it is actually a read switch. So you type S2. Okay, and then as you can see, the selected normally open contact changes its symbol into a limit switch okay so that would be s2 so take note it's open okay so and then if we try to uh, simulate so once this sensor will be triggered okay so once the sensor will detect that the cylinder is in fully extended position this will close so focus your attention in s2 it is uh, at first open but when the cylinder uh, has extended okay so okay so the cylinder now has already extended so the sensor s2 now closes okay so we need to find a way wherein after s2 closes it will give a signal okay so this will give a signal to the control circuit that the solenoid y1 must be turned off for the cylinder to retract okay so to do that, okay, so uh, we may use another relay to so take note that in a ladder circuit, the operation would be done or the sequential operation would be done rung per rung. So meaning to say for A plus, so this would be the first sequence, so the next part of the ladder okay so the uh, next uh, rung okay so we call the next or we call the uh, horizontal lines okay so in this ladder as rung okay so the next rung will command also the next step which is A minus okay so to do that so we can incorporate another okay so we can incorporate another relay okay so we can have another relay and then we'll name this one k2 okay so for example we name this one k2 and then uh, we can connect okay so we can connect uh, S2 in series with K2 such that when S2 is triggered so this will close this will activate K2 and in turn K2 will de-energize Y1 okay so but before that okay so we can connect S2 to the positive terminal and connect it to one of the terminal okay so of the k2 coil okay so take note all the circuit elements must be connected in parallel 
So, Y1 is connected in parallel with K1. K2 is connected in parallel with Y1 and K1. Okay. So, if we try to simulate now. Okay. So, if we press start, Y1 is activated. K1 is activated. Sealing this contact. Okay. So, enables the... Uh, operation to let cylinder A continue to extend. So, as cylinder A attains the fully extended position, S2 now is activated or S2 detects okay, so the presence of the piston rod, so thereby activating K2. So, therefore, the next step would be to de energize, of course, Y1. So, to de-energize Y1, so then there must be something, okay, so that will cut off the supply, okay, so from positive to uh, the terminal of Y1. So, to do that, we need to insert, okay, so we need to insert normally close contact of K2, okay, so in between, okay, so these terminals okay so in between this point in such a way that when k2 is activated the normally closed contact becomes open so as it becomes open it will de-energize y1 then it will okay so allow cylinder 2 to uh, retract i mean cylinder a to retract Okay, so we try to erase this one. So we have the brake switch normally open. I mean normally close. Double click. So type K2. And then as you notice, the symbol changes. Okay, so... And then we try to simulate after. So we do expect after the addition of K2. So the cylinder will extend and then automatically it retracts. Okay. Okay. So we have already accomplished half of the sequence that is A plus and then A minus. Okay. So again, we'll try to simulate A plus, A minus. Okay. So, A minus means the cylinder A is now in a retracted position. So, the next step would be to uh, extend B. Okay, so that would be to extend cylinder B which is given by B plus. Okay, so now if you try to look at we have there A plus, so which is detected by S2, then A minus, so which will be detected by O force S1. Okay, so the one that will detect that the cylinder A or cylinder A has uh, attained the fully retracted position after it extends is S1. Okay, so sensor 1 detects that the uh, cylinder A has returned to the fully retracted position. So what we'll do next is to find a way wherein S1, okay, so after S1 detects that the cylinder A is in retracted position, S1 will command, okay, so it will command Y2, okay, to be energized in such a way that the cylinder B will extend. So take note, okay, so take note of the uh, operating principle of a 5 to way double solenoid valve. So connected with uh, a double acting cylinder. So for a double acting cylinder to extend in a 5 to way double solenoid valve is to uh, energize Okay, so for example, Y2, and then to retract the uh, double-acting cylinder, 
okay so using double solenoid so we need to not just turn off y2 but also to energize the second coil which is y3 so before we continue so we need to have the okay s1 so again sensors are normally closed i mean normally open uh, switch so we choose make switch okay so we stop the simulation first okay so make switch and then this will be labeled s1 okay limit switch s1 okay so take note it is normally open then after clicking ok the switch s1 automatically uh, closed okay so the question is why so why did it becomes uh, close wherein in the first place it is normally open so the answer is if you try to look at the cylinder initially okay so the cylinder initially is in retracted position that means initially also the sensor s1 detects that the cylinder particularly a cylinder a is in retracted position however if or as soon as the cylinder leaves okay so as soon as the cylinder extends try to look at s1 so if you try to start so as soon as the cylinder leaves s1 becomes open okay so again try to take a look at s1 so when the cylinder leaves so that means if the cylinder extends so it leaves the position of s1 to be uh, undetected okay so the the piston rod is uh, undetected when it extends then therefore s1 goes to its normally open contact uh, state okay so now we'll need to find a way in wherein after okay so after s1 or after the uh, cylinder a retracts wherein it is detected by s1 then cylinder b will be able to extend also okay so uh, what we'll do is uh, we try to find a design okay so or uh, we'll try to find uh, a way wherein after s1 uh, detects so this s1 must be able to uh, energize y2 so we need to have the solenoid valve first for y2 okay so this should be y2 and of course it is connected in series with s1 so that means that if s1 is detected or s1 detects that the uh, cylinder now is in retracted position it will activate y2 but as you can see okay so as you can see s1 is in closed position uh, initially so therefore we cannot connect this one directly to positive so it must be connected to uh, a place in the circuit wherein after that particular uh, sequence the next rung which is the s1 and y2 will activate so if you try to look at who will or where is that part in the circuit wherein that will dictate the s1 to be activated so the answer is this part of the circuit okay so we're in after it uh, detects s or after it detects that the cylinder a has extended okay so this one so after the operation of this rung so it will 
uh, pass the operation to the next rung, so which is uh, the series combination of S1 and Y2. Okay, so uh, because if you try to connect S1, for example, if you try to connect S1 to the positive and then Y2 to the uh, negative, so what will happen is that if we try to simulate so immediately, okay, so since S1 is uh, closed, okay, so S1 is closed because it detects the presence of uh, the piston rod of cylinder A. So it immediately, okay, so after the simulation, okay, so or after turning on the supply, so as you can see, the uh, cylinder B uh, directly extend uh, without even pressing any part of the circuitry. So therefore, we cannot connect S1 directly to the positive. Okay, so we'll try to remove this line. Okay, so I will find a way wherein uh, if we turn on the supply, that means if we start the simulation, so Y2 will not be energized directly. So what we'll do is to, okay, so... We may connect S1 here, okay. So such that if uh, S2 will close, okay. So if S2 closes, Okay, so if the sensor closes, it activates K2, and at the same time, it activates Y2. So let's try to look at the simulation, okay, so, so that we will, we will be able to know if the uh, connection, okay, so is correct. So we can further slow down the flow, so to 5%. Okay, so also this one to 5% and then this one also to 5%. Okay, so we can simulate. So A plus, A minus. Okay, so nothing happens. Okay, so again, no? so A plus, as you can see, S2 closes. But as soon as the cylinder leaves, okay, so as soon as the cylinder A retracts, it immediately closes or it immediately opens S2 such that if uh, S1 closes, then Y2 will not be activated because S2 is still uh, open. So we need to find a way wherein even if S2 is open, okay, so take note, uh, S2 will only be closed when okay so when the cylinder is in or cylinder a is in fully extended position but if the cylinder starts to leave okay or starts to retract immediately s2 will open okay so that is why even if s1 closes okay so like this one okay so i try to simulate so S2 close, but as the cylinder moves, okay, so S2 becomes open, and even if we try to close or S1 closes, so Y2 cannot be activated, okay, so because again S2 now at this time is open. So we'll try to find a way wherein even if S2 is open, so the moment that S1 will close, so it will still be able to uh, activate Y2. So we'll try to remove this one. Okay, so and then uh, we move it downward. Okay, so uh, we'll try to find a way. Okay, so we're in 
uh, this rung will remain activated okay even if s2 opens so to do that okay so we can put a ceiling contact for s2 okay so the ceiling contact so which is for k2 so the purpose of the ceiling contact is to maintain okay so this will maintain the second rung to be activated okay so this will maintain the second rung to be activated even if s2 is open okay so if you try to look at if you try to okay start so the moment cylinder a leaves s2 so s2 opens but k2 or this rung is still activated because of the presence of the ceiling contact so the question as to why do we need to activate or why do we need to maintain the uh, operation of the second rung this one okay so the answer is uh, it will actually command the next operation which is the b plus operation so if we de-energize the second rung then there is no way that the control circuit can continue to operate uh, the next sequence which is b plus so if you try to look at if we try to connect okay so s1 here okay so if we try to separate or turn on the supply so y2 is not activated okay so this time because s2 and k2 are open so y2 will only activate if k2 will be activated and k2 will activate only when s2 is activated so if we try to simulate that will be a plus a minus and then b plus okay so that would be the purpose why we need to keep keep the uh, second rung to be activated because it will command the next operation which is the b plus okay so take note this time okay so this time we have already accomplished three-fourth of the uh, sequence which is a plus a minus then b plus so when we say b plus okay so we focus our attention to the second cylinder cylinder b so when we say b plus that means the cylinder b will be in a fully extended position so after the cylinder b uh, reach the fully extended position then the next step would be to retract the cylinder b which is b minus okay so now the question is how do the system knows that the cylinder b is now in fully extended position so the answer is uh, it is due to the detection of sensor 4 or s4 so take note this is a read switch as you can see the uh, end ring okay of the piston rod is now under s4 so it detects the presence of this uh, end ring of the uh, piston rod so once it detects that means that the uh, cylinder b or the second cylinder is now in its fully extended position okay so then s4 will command okay so the cylinder to retract so 
S4 must be able to command Y3. Okay, so it must be able to uh, let Y3 be energized so in such a way that this okay, so that this um, cylinder will retract. Okay, so we need to have the sensor 4 okay so sensor 4 again is a normally open switch so we label this one uh, s4 but we click read contact because it is a read switch okay so as you notice the symbol changes okay so for s4 Okay, so this would be the uh, symbol for read switch uh, under NEMA okay, standard symbol. Okay, so we're going to uh, connect Y3. Okay, so Y3 must be connected to S4. So in such a way that when Y3 is okay, so when Y3 is uh, energized, so through S4, so that will uh, give a signal uh, to the circuit, okay, so or to the cylinder to retract. So we connect this one in series. And then Y3 will be connected to negative, so we'll just have to find a way. Okay, so wherein uh, we can. Okay, so okay, so we can say it again. Okay, so and then try to look at what will happen to S4. So A plus A minus then B plus okay so as you can see okay so as you can see here S4 is now uh, activated okay so this is activated or it closes because because it detects okay so the presence of the end ring of the piston rod so thereby it is supposed to energize Y3. So when Y3 is energized, then this okay. So this cylinder here will or must uh, or will retract. Okay. So we'll try to find a way wherein uh, we can let the circuit okay so through S4. Okay, so we can let the circuit to uh, command the cylinder to uh, retract to its initial position. So if we connect, for example, S4 in this uh, terminal, okay, so and then if uh, let's try to simulate and then uh, look at what will happen to the uh, circuits. We have A plus, A minus, then B plus. Okay, then uh, supposedly Y3 is now uh, activated. Okay, so however, the cylinder does not return to the initial position even though y3 is activated so it is because uh, as you can see y2 is also activated at the same time okay so again the principle of a five two way double solenoid is that uh, for example y2 must be uh, activated for the cylinder to extend However, with the activation of Y2, Y3 must be deactivated, okay? So, for the cylinder to retract, Y3 must be activated. Uh, on the other hand, 
at the same time y2 is also deactivated so the uh, function of the 5 to a double solenoid valve is that uh, for the cylinder to extend or retract then there must be one coil that must be activated at a time so when y2 is activated y3 must be uh, de-energized or the other way around if y3 is energized y2 must be deactivated so in this case if you try to look at y3 is activated at the same time y2 is activated then uh, what happens is that uh, the cylinder will not move so it will remain in its last position so the last position is extended so when we activate y3 again it is supposed to uh, let the second cylinder to retract but then again uh, as you can see it does not because y2 is still activated so we'll find uh, we'll try to find a way wherein after s4 is uh, detected or after s4 has detected uh, the fully extension of uh, cylinder B S4 must be or uh, S4 must be able to activate Y3 at the same time uh, it must also deactivate Y2 okay so to do this okay so we need to okay so we need to find a way to cut off okay so we'll try to find the way to cut off the supply okay so of this rung okay so perhaps we can make use of a normally close contact such that when uh, y3 is activated that normally close contact will open Okay, so we can do that by, okay, so inserting, okay, so, but before that, we can perhaps add a relay, okay, so we call this one, for example, K3, so since Y3 does not have, again, okay, so again, so you have to take note that the solenoid coil cannot offer an auxiliary contact so if you want an auxiliary contact okay so to function together with the solenoid coil then you must pair the solenoid coil with a relay so if we connect the gate 3 in parallel with okay so for example in parallel with uh, y3 so we can now provide an auxiliary contact that will activate upon activation of Y3. So take note, we want Y2. Okay, so we want Y2 to be deactivated. Okay, so as soon as Y3 activates, then uh, we'll need to have, okay, so a normally closed contact to be inserted. Uh, okay. So it must be inserted uh, in between to cut off the uh, supply just like uh, what we have done in uh, this normally closed K2. So this normally closed K2 will deactivate Y1. So the same thing K3. So we have to insert normally closed contact. So this would be K3. So such that when K3 activates, it will open the circuit. Okay, so and then once it opens the circuit, so the elements connected to that open circuit will be deactivated or de-energized. So perhaps we can, okay, so we can have uh, the normally closed K3 in between this one. K2 and S2. Okay, so in such a way that 
Okay, so we'll try to simulate. Okay, so so a plus a minus b plus. Okay, so k three does not. Okay, so uh, the positioning of normally closed k three is uh, incorrect. So we'll try to find another way. Okay, so we'll try to remove K3 and then connect this back. Okay. So we modify the uh, ladder circuit for. Okay, so since the addition of normally closed K3. In between K2 and S2, cannot uh, retract the cylinder B. Okay, so let me. Okay, so let's try again. So A plus A minus B plus. Okay, so again. Okay, so. Uh, we are stuck in uh, B plus. So what we're going to do now is to okay. So let's try to modify. Okay. So since S four is uh, normally open, okay. So uh, I mean S four is initially open. Okay. So we can connect. Okay, so we can connect S four. Okay, so directly to the positive. Okay, so such that if we try to turn on the circuit, okay, so Y3 is not uh, activated. Okay, so uh, a while ago, S1 is chosen to be connected not in the positive because uh, as mentioned, it will directly activate Y2 once the uh, power is being or once the power is uh, turned on. So if the sensor is initially open, okay, so it can be connected directly to the uh, positive terminal. Okay. So what will happen now is we'll try to create. Okay. So we'll try to find a way wherein once S4 uh, will close so Y3 will be activated together with K3 and uh, of course K2. Okay, so this will be or Y2 will be uh, deactivated also together with uh, Y3. So what we're going to do is to, okay, so we can. Okay, so we can. Okay, so let's try to simulate again. Okay, so for us to evaluate what would be the next step to be done. Okay, so that's A. Okay, so you notice. Okay, so Y2 is activated. So and then K3. Okay, so K3 is. Uh, set now to open. Okay, so but take note K3 is initially uh, closed. Okay, so let me run. Okay, so the same result, so that would be uh, B plus. So what happens to K3 is after this extends, okay, so or after the cylinder to extend, so K3 is activated. Okay, so as soon as Y3 is activated, so the auxiliary contact of uh, K3 is now open. Okay, so to de-energize Y2, okay, so if you try to look at the one that uh, keep Y2, to be energized at this point is uh, the ceiling contact of K2. 
So, if we try to insert, okay, so, if we try to insert uh, K3 here, okay, so, there might be a chance that, okay, so once Y3 is activated, K3 will deactivate uh, K2. So, which will in turn uh, make the cylinder to retract. So, let's try again. Okay, so, A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. Okay, so, it is only a while ago that we position, okay? So we position the uh, sensor S4, okay? So in this point or at this point, okay? So we modify the circuit by uh, reconnecting S4 to the positive terminal, okay? So again, a while ago we have or what we have done is actually we connect okay so we connect S4 okay so this is what we have done a while ago so going back A plus A minus so B plus okay so what happens actually is uh, S4 Okay, so S4 uh, closes, but K2 is uh, deactivated. Okay, so K2 is deactivated, thereby leaving K2 here uh, open. So even though S4 closes, so it cannot activate Y3 because... Uh, K2 here is open. So, to allow Y3 to be activated, so, we need to find a way wherein if S4 will close, so, even though uh, K2 here is open, so, it can still activate uh, Y3 even momentarily. So, what we do is we try to transfer, okay? So, we try to remove this one and transfer it to this point. So, in such a way that if S4 closes, okay, so try to take a look. It, uh, if S4 closes, so even if S2 and K2 are open, so if this closes, so Y3, will be activated okay so and then uh, k3 will also be activated so once k3 is activated so this uh, opens okay so this part here so de-energizing y2 okay so at the same time energizing y3 so thereby the cylinder can retract so a plus a minus, B plus, and B minus. Okay, so again, A plus, A minus, B plus, and B minus. Okay, so, so what, uh, okay, so what are the things Okay, so that uh, the example uh, tells us uh, that might be useful for the next example. Okay, so number one is that if the sensor, which is uh, actually normally open, if the sensor is uh, closed, Okay, so if it is closed initially, okay, so just like S1, 
so this is closed so we do not connect the sensor directly to the positive uh, terminal because again it will directly energize the series uh, coil but if the sensor which is normally open and if that sensor is uh, initially open just like S2 and S4 so we can connect directly the sensors to the positive terminal so why because they are initially open so once we turn on the uh, supply so they will not activate directly the series connected elements unless otherwise uh, these sensors will detect the presence of the uh, piston rod or the end ring of the uh, rod okay so so this would be for a plus a minus b plus and b minus okay so the next example will be using the uh, timer okay so you can save this one by uh, clicking okay so you may stop the simulation first first and then uh, click save us and then choose a destination folder and then click save with a given file name okay so next activity will be for uh, a plus b plus then time five seconds okay so then b minus and uh, a minus 